What's up, players? Welcome to Sims Tennis. We've got a little racket customization video for you guys today. I'm going to be showing you how to customize rackets, how to match them to each other, and how to do that in a way so that all the customizations are hidden. All right, so I've got three new 2023 V-Core 98s that we'll be working with today as I've begun the process of switching to this racket. I've got their current specs there listed in blue. And then on the left-hand column, I've written the last two digits of each racket serial number so I know which is which during the customization. Okay, so my first priority here is to bump up the swing weights of racket 58 and racket 60, closer to that of racket number 95. And that one sits at a swing weight of 285. From there, we can go ahead and correct the weight and balance of the rackets and get those pretty close as well. So my ultimate goal when doing these customizations is to get the weight within a gram, the balance within one millimeter, and then the swing weight within one swing weight point. So we're gonna start working with racket number 60, and I've done some calculations that should allow us to achieve just that. In order to make these calculations, I use Tennis Warehouse's customization worksheet, and I start by putting in the weight balance and swing weight of the racket that I currently have. And after entering those, the worksheet will allow me to hypothetically add weight in locations that I want, which for this customization is going to be under the butt cap, as well as about 22 inches up the racket. That 22 inch location is the one that's going to help me bump up the swing weight. And so that's what I'm going to start with here. So 22 inches up the racket, about five inches out from center. I'm going to try adding two grams. Once I hit enter and I scroll up, you'll see that that bumped the swing weight up to 285, which is exactly where we wanted it to be. In order to keep the balance from changing too much, I use the worksheet in the exact same way to determine that one gram under the butt cap will help the balance from changing too much. So we're gonna go ahead and start by adding that weight under the butt cap, and then we'll come back and add the weight in the hoop of the racket after. So let's go ahead and get the butt cap off this racket and get to work. You'll see that I've got some small screwdrivers that I really like to use for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a small flathead and we'll use that to pop the trap door off the butt cap. As we get the butt cap off the racket, you're going to see that the handle is filled with foam. I typically like to put tungsten putty inside a cotton ball and stick it in that tubing where the foam filling is. But in this case, since the handle is foam filled, we're just going to go ahead and add the weight to the butt cap itself. I'm going to show you the underside of this butt cap, which happens to have a nice flat surface. And what that's going to allow me to do is take some strips of lead and lay them down on the underside of the butt cap. So I'm going to go ahead and take those small strips of lead and lay them down on top of each other inside of the butt cap. I'm going to do that until I've increased the weight of the butt cap by a gram. And as you can see here, this is the finished product. So we'll just go ahead and pop that back on the racket and then we'll get to work on adding the weight on the hoop of the racket. Okay, so first off, I've chosen to add lead at this 22 inch location for a couple of reasons. The first is that the grommet strip goes 24 inches up the racket, which I'm pointing out here. And if I'm gonna add four inches of lead to each side, my center of mass for that lead will be at 22 inches. And then the second is that I like this location because it's gonna add both swing weight and twist weight to the racket. All right, so I've started to work the grommet off here. I like to start by pressing the holes from the inside of the frame out until I can fit my fingers underneath the grommet and kind of pull from the outside. Um, I'll occasionally need to go back to the inside and push to create more space. And then I can just kind of repeat that process from the inside, uh, pull from the outside, back and forth um, until the grommets are down to the spot where I need them to be in order to add the four inches of lead. All right, so that's about how far down the grommets will need to be removed for this job. I'm going to need to do that to the other side of the racket, but we can go ahead and skip past that part so you guys can see how I add the lead. All right, so I've got my two four inch strips of lead. Each one weighs a gram. And what I'm doing right here is I'm bending the strip so that it fits better into the channel where the grommets go. Depending on what type of racket you're going to be adding that lead to, you may or may not need to do that. I've done this to some new head rackets recently, like the Extreme and the Radical, and the lead tape actually fits down in that channel perfectly, um, just nice and flat. The channel's like that exact same width, um, so that job was really easy. But for this one, the channel's a little bit deeper, um, and so it helps to kind of pre-bend the strips so that they get down in there a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and start laying these lead strips down. Um, I'm not gonna be using any gloves for this installation just because it's kind of hard and tedious to get the lead exactly where I want it, but it's not a bad idea to use gloves when installing lead um, whenever possible. 
All right, so what I've done here is I've picked out a grommet hole that I want to use as my guide for where to start laying down the lead strip. I'm going to use the Q-tip to press the first inch or so of the strip into the channel just to anchor that down so that as I work the rest of the strip into the channel, it doesn't move or slide around at all. All right, so now that I've got that first part of the strip anchored, I'm just gonna work on centering the rest of the strip over the channel um, so that I can finish up this installation. So what I'll do is I'll work on centering the strip and I'll just push it down a little bit of the ways initially with my finger so that way it's not too stuck. Um, if I need to pull it up, I still can at this point um, until I get the whole thing centered over the channel. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the Q-tip and the Q-tip's what I'll use to press it down the rest of the way into the channel. Again, the channel on this particular racket is kind of narrow and kind of deep, and so I need the Q-tip for this job, whereas in some other installations that I've done recently, um, I can just press it down into the channel um, just using my finger. And so now that we've got the strips laid down, we're just gonna need to put some holes in the lead so that we can push the grommets back through. Um, if you push the lead down firmly using the Q-tip, as I showed before, you'll be able to see circles in the lead where the holes in the frame already are. Um, that's because the lead is pliable and starts to get pushed into those holes a little bit. So I'll use those circles as guides to make two cuts, um, one in one direction and then the other cut at a 90 degree angle. So it just creates an X over each one of these holes. And so then that way, when the grommet gets pushed through, um, the lead gets folded over nicely into the frame um, and just kind of adheres itself on the inside of the frame. This works out well because you don't want any loose pieces of lead moving around in the frame. And this is the best method that I found to accomplish that. All right, so I'm just gonna continue making these holes by working my way up the frame one hole at a time. Again, just making an X by putting a cut in one direction and then a second cut at a 90 degree angle from the first cut. Okay, so I'm working on the last hole now and for that one, it's covered up by the head guard. So I just press the head guard down so that I can see where the circle is in the lead and then I make those two cuts. Now that I've got all the holes made, we can start pushing the grommets back through. Um, so I'll just start working them in one grommet at a time, trying to make sure that they're lined up if ever you hit a snag, you can grab a screwdriver. Um, I use a skinny screwdriver to put through the hole in the frame and kind of find the plastic grommet and just get it to line up so that it pushes back through the frame nicely. All right, and so I'm just gonna continue doing that, working my way up the frame, uh, one grommet hole at a time. Once you get everything initially lined up, it starts to go a little bit quicker. And again, if you ever hit a snag, you can just kind of grab the screwdriver and wiggle that plastic from the inside so that it gets lined up and kind of pushes through. So once you get up to the top and get every um, piece of plastic kind of lined up with the hole, um, it's gonna go ahead and pop through. So I'm just trying to get this top one to line up here. Sometimes that's the most difficult because you might need to stretch it um, to get it to get back into um, that hole. And then once you get it in, you can see now it's kind of pressing in nicely. Um, you may find one or two holes that catch. And so again, you can just grab a screwdriver, just wiggle it a little bit until it's lined up. Um, and then once they're all lined up, everything will pop through just fine, just how it was initially. All right, and so it looks like I have everything all lined up and ready to go here. So I'm gonna go back to the outside of the frame and just push it down firmly until it lays flat against the frame. You will then just repeat that same process for the other side of the racket, and then you'll be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and skip over that step though so that we can get the specs and see how everything turned out. Okay, so as a reminder, this is racket 60, and we had an initial swing weight of 281. Our target swing weight was 285 and we do in fact get 285. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase the 281 that we had and replace it with the 285 that we now have. From there, we'll go ahead and get the weight. Our starting weight was 304.2 grams. We put two grams on the frame and one gram under the butt cap. And so that puts us at a finishing weight of 307 grams. So we'll go ahead and erase the 304.2 that we had and write down the 307. From there, we'll go ahead and get the balance. What we had was a 313 millimeter balance. And so we're looking for that or maybe something a little bit more head heavy. So 313 
314, 315. What we end up with here is 314. And so we'll go ahead and erase the 313 that we had and replace it with the 314 that we now have. All right, so now that racket 60 is finished and the swing weight matches racket 95, we're just gonna go ahead and adjust the weight and balance. In this situation, the easiest way to do that is to bump up the static weight of racket 95 to match that of racket number 60. We can do that by adding 1.5 grams of lead under the butt cap, and that might even move the balance a little bit more away from the head, and we could potentially even match that 314 millimeter balance of racket 60. So since we've already gone over how to add that weight under the butt cap, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add that weight to racket 95, and then we'll come back and get the final specs of that racket. All right, so I've added that weight and I've reinstalled the butt cap. So let's go ahead and recheck the specs here of racket 95. We started with a swing weight of 285, and since we only added weight under the butt cap, that swing weight did not change, and so we still have that swing weight of 285. All right, so next we'll go ahead and get the weight. Uh, we were aiming to increase the weight by a gram and a half, and we were able to do just that. We had a weight of 305, and we're going to go ahead and replace that with our new weight of 306.5. Next, we'll go ahead and get the balance. Um, since all of the weight that we added was under the butt cap, uh, the racket should be a little bit more head light. And we do, in fact, end up with a slightly more head light balance of 314, which is great because that matches racket number 60. All right, so now that rackets 95 and 60 are finished, we're going to work on matching 58 to the specs of those. We're going to need to increase the overall weight. We're going to need to move the balance a bit more towards the head, and we're going to need to increase the swing weight from 281 to closer to 285. We can accomplish all three of those things by adding two grams of lead to that 22 inch location again. And since you've already seen that customization done, we'll skip over that process and move on to getting the final specs of Racket 58. All right, so we've added those two grams of lead to the 22 inch location on this racket. So let's go ahead and get the final specs, starting with the swing weight. What we had was a swing weight of 281, and we're looking to get it closer to that 285 number. And what we end up with here is a swing weight of 286. So we'll just erase the 281 that we used to have and replace it with the 286 that we now have. And then we'll move on to get the weight of the racket. Um, for the weight, we added two grams again at that 22 inch location. So we were looking for that weight of 305.5 to increase to around 307.5. And that's exactly what we accomplish. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that 305.5 that we had and replace it with the 307.5 that we now have. So now we have all three rackets weight within one gram of each other. We've got the swing weight within one point of each other. Lastly, we're gonna check the balance to see if we can get within a millimeter here. What we had for this racket was a balance of 312 and we added two grams of lead to the head. That should move the balance closer to the head and closer to that 314 number. And that's exactly what happened. So we got 314. So we'll erase 312 and replace it with the 314 that we now have. And we'll take a final look at the specs and see what we got. So as we double check all the specs here, it looks like we were able to accomplish exactly what we set out to do today. We have all three rackets weight within one gram. The balance actually matches each other perfectly. And then the swing weights are all within one point of each other. All right, so that's it for today's video. If you found that helpful, please hit that like button. And until next time, don't forget to embrace the grind.